Welcome. So what I'd like to do is talk to you about the definition of the inverse cosine function and kind of look at the graph and also the, um, the function itself. So if we have y equals the inverse cosine of x, that is going to be true if and only if the cosine of y equals x. Now, that kind of brings back our whole discussion of you know, how do we find the inverse of a function. And when looking at it algebraically, what we did is we would swap the x and y's and then solve for y. So to solve for y, what we use is we use this inverse function, which would say cosine, or what's called inverse cosine of x. Now, the, another way to look at the inverse cosine is to look at the graph. And so let's kind of go back into our cosine function and just kind of take a look at what the graph is and then how would the inverse cosine graph look as well. So remember the cosine graph, um, the initial period starts at 1 comma 0. And then there's four critical points, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, now these critical points are going to become very important for us when determining the inverse cosine. Now, remember, this does go into the negative direction and continues on, but I'm just going to look at the initial period. Now, the important thing when looking at the inverse, how, you know, how do we find the inverse of a graph? Well, we reflected the graph about what we called the xy line. So if I was going to take this graph, even if it's on its infinite portions, and I was going to flip it around the xy line, before trying to like estimate exactly what this graph is going to look like, what I can do is remember to find the graph, you know, we reflect it over the xy line, but also what we do is we swap the x and y coordinates. So let's take a look at a couple of coordinates that we have here on this graph. So the coordinates that I want to look at are going to be pi comma um, negative 1. All right, so there's three important points that I want to look at. First is 0 comma 1. Next one is pi halves comma 0, and then at pi comma negative 1. So if I was going to flip these new coordinates, I would now have 1 comma 0, which would be a point. I would have negative 1. So now I'm going to go between negative 1 and 1, and negative 1 up to pi. And then I would have flop this one, I would have 0 up to pi halves. Therefore, now my graph, if I was going to look at this and say, how would you, know, you reflect that over? Now I could say my graph is going to take a shape like this, all right, which looks a little bit interesting. And that's only dealing with these three coordinate points. Now, we don't graph the rest of the function because if I was to continue this function on, what you notice is my graph would now violate the vertical line test, therefore not being a function at all. So in dealing with the inverse cosine, we have to have a restriction on its range. So by looking at this graph, we know that the graph is now going to have a domain between negative 1 and 1, where we could say negative 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1. And the range, rather than the graph continuing in the infinite positive inch and negative direction, we're now going to say the range is going to be restricted between um, 0 and 0 and pi, where we could say 0 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to pi. And again, remember, we restrict the, we restrict the range, so therefore we can have our inverse, func inverse cosine is still going to be a function. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's a quick little uh, video on the definition of the inverse cosine. Thanks.